Drew Brees and the Saints have a deal. They beat Monday's 4 p.m. deadline. Chris, what more can you tell us about this incredible deal? Well, you, you gave the details. and Listen, the two sides obviously were within striking distance of getting this deal done. Uh, it was just a matter of really uh, clearing some hurdles to the point where now Drew Brees has an unprecedented contract. There's never been an NFL player to average $20 million a year. There's never been an NFL player to get $40 million guaranteed in year one, $55 million after year two, and $60 million in the first three years. And you would have to say that they were close enough to close the gap, and that's what happened. Uh, you know, according to my sources, you know, the Mickey Loomis, the general manager of the Saints, and Tom Conn and the agent for Drew Brees worked very hard the last 24 hours. And finally, Brees uh, basically signed off on it. Even though it's a, a verbal agreement, Drew still has to take a physical and sign a contract, I believe, uh, for this to be finalized. But it, it is the biggest contract in terms of the average per year, $20 million, the amount of money that he'll be getting the first uh, year, two years, three years. And, uh, you know, you would have to guess it. Aaron Rodgers is happy, too, because he'll probably be getting a new deal in another year or two himself. And that was my next question. How does this change precedent going forward for others at the position, Chris? What, what's that? How does this change the precedent going forward for other quarterbacks at the position? Well, well, well I mean, it, 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 it changes it for the ones who are playing at a high, high level. I mean, a guy like Drew Brees, we talk about all the statistical numbers, but he's won more games. The Saints have won more games during that time, and he did win a Super Bowl. Uh, you know, on average, Peyton Manning, you know, is at $19.2 million, and we know he did that without even what you would say bidding, you know, having teams bid against each other. And, of course, Drew, you know, his only leverage was to exercise the fact that, hey, you, you may have franchised me, but... I have no plans to show to training camp and keep you guessing as to when I'm going to show. But the bottom line is, is that Drew intended to play for the Saints. He loves playing for the Saints. We know what he's done for the New Orleans community. So when you think of everything he did on and off the field, uh, you know, it's not a surprise that he got these numbers. And it won't be a surprise when a guy like Aaron Rodgers surpasses him at some point. Chris, as I'm reading the notes here further, in 2013, the Saints do have a window that they could release him. Could you explain that a little bit? Well, yeah, these are these deals are this deal's written like this. So he's getting 40 million dollars in year one. Uh, right after the Super Bowl, there's a five-day dead period, and then it then starts what you call the waiver period before free agency. And the first three days of that waiver period, if the Saints wanted to cut Drew Brees after paying him $40 million in year one, they could do that. But after that three-day period passes, his $15 million more for year two becomes fully guaranteed against skill, injury, or even salary cap. In other words, it becomes fully guaranteed. So, yes, after year one, if, if uh, they didn't, uh, you know, didn't think that Drew could play anymore or he, or he had a catastrophic injury, Technically, there's a three-day window in which they could cut him. But you don't pay somebody $40 million in year one to go off and do that. So the way the union and even the league looks at this is that the virtual guarantee here, guaranteed money in these first three years is, is $60 million. And as I said, $40 million this year, $55 million in the first two years. And the average on, on, the, on the deal is $20 million per year. Chris, how important was it in the end to Drew Brees and possibly the Saints, but that he set these new records for quarterbacks. Did that matter to him? I, you know, I don't. I think when he goes back and reflects on it, 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 you know, it'll be something wonderful. But you know, somebody, somebody else could break it with the with the way the, the game's going out of these days, with how many passing yards there are. I think when you get beat by the 49ers in the playoffs, it kind of diminishes for Drew. I mean, he, you know, he's like anybody else. He's all about winning and all about winning Super Bowls. And, and he's done that during this past three-year period. And when you consider, if you look at the Saints' history before Drew got there, and Sean Payton, the head coach, you know, obviously, uh, you know, he's done a lot of things in terms of total victories. But the, as far as setting, you know, the, the passing record for Dan Marino, yes, it's a great milestone. How long it stands up, who knows? Maybe Drew will break that himself again.
Yeah, I also was, was talking about setting records as far as pay and salary. Oh, setting records as far as pay. Well, yes. Drew's, uh, Drew's smart enough to know what we just talked about. It'll probably be the record for another year and a half until Aaron Rodgers redoes, he <laughs> redoes his deal with the Green Bay Packers. All right. So that's, that's always why, uh, you know, I think sometimes we make a little bit too much of it, but it is a very good payday, and it's good news for Drew Brees. It's good news for uh, the Saints. Good news for the New Orleans community. And I can tell you, and I'm in Louisiana right now, that uh, it's, it's, it's the number one question I've been getting for the past 24 hours. Why can't we get this done? And they got it done. And they certainly did. Five years, $100 million deal, $60 million guaranteed, $40 million that first year. And Drew Brees will be ready to go for the Saints in camp, a team that desperately needed some good news. Thanks, Chris.